नमस्कार एम आई ऑडिबल यस थैंक यू थैंक यू नमस्ते एंड वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस ब्यूटिफुल सत्संग विच श्री अनीश वी ऑल वेट फॉर वी हैव टू वेट फॉर यू नो टू वीक्स टू बी इन दिस प्रेजेंस टू बी एबल टू रिसीव गुरुज गाइडेंस एंड दिस ऑनलाइन सत्संग फॉर दोज आई नो हु हैव बीन अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस फॉर लास्ट फ्यू वीक्स एंड फॉर दोज हुव बीन अटेंडिंग इट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम नो दैट दिस कनेक्शन विद द गुरु and this guru disciple connection does not need physical presence uh, it just needs the availability of the of the disciple in the presence of the guru and hence all the physical boundaries they they just become uh, invalid in that case so this is what we all experience in in this platform on this you know this beautiful collective gathering called this online satsang with sri anish it is a beautiful sunday morning and also uh, the fourth navratri and uh, if you joined uh, a little earlier you must have heard the sadhu nads uh, mantra called narayani namostute which is an invocation to the divine so we receive the blessing of the devi to be uh, today morning and uh, uh, with the devi and with the shakti's blessing we are now starting this satsang and um, it is also a blessing to be presence of you all in the presence of you all seekers because each one of us are pouring our energies so i am not going to take much time i am just all i'm going to request you all as i always say uh, be fully here uh, it's the morning time it's sunday you don't have much work to do you don't have to go anywhere uh, i'm um, i i i'm pretty sure about it so pick up a nice beautiful quiet corner wherever you are um and anish you always suggests uh, suggests that you must uh, plug in your earphones like i also have plug in your earphones so that you can directly receive his guidance so so just do these two things and uh, i'll not take much time and now i'm going to invite shri anish and request for his presence as we are waiting and uh, this is going to be the only satsang in this navratri period so what a blessing to to be a part of this satsang on these beautiful and divine days so anish ji request you to please join namaste 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 everybody so good to see you all so it is my voice clear yes yes absolutely lovely so happy sunday morning to all of you and uh, uh, the fourth day of the devi navratra today is uh, if you know is the day of devi kushmanda which is uh, the representation of devi as a golden cosmic womb from which the entire creation then came forward so today we pray to her uh, as the as a creator of this entire cosmos uh, um, i don't know if you are receiving or if you are seeing uh, for every day of the navratra if you know there are nine days and nights dedicated to devi and every day has a certain form uh, a certain aspect of the devi divine energy that we pray to uh, i've been writing small messages uh, which is that what does this form today's form uh means to us and how can we uh, look at the deeper aspect of that for our own self growth yeah so do uh, read them out there are some uh, uh, deep layers when we celebrate navratri there are deep layers behind the manifested form of the devi of that day uh, it could guide you on a certain path and give you certain directions Yes, with that, uh, lovely to see you all once again, Swati Ji. Over to you. Let's begin. Okay. Yes. Yes. Anishi, let's start with our first question. 
And this is being asked by uh, Neha Ji from Mumbai. She's saying, uh, Namaste Anishi, I'm curious about uh, which approach is better. The first is surrendering to the divine will, accepting things as they come, or proactively working towards manifesting and committing to a spiritual goal. Hmm. Wonderful question. Very good question from Neha. Yes. So which path is better is the question. The path of absolute surrender to the divine will or the path of uh, proaction where we are putting our energy, our being into creating certain manifestation as per our spiritual goals. Which path is better? Few pointers here, Neha, and for everybody. You know, we many times uh, in the world, in life, and especially in the spiritual journey, we start to use words so often, certain words we use so often that we forget the depth of the meaning of those words. And one such word is surrender. We use this word very often, but we do not realize the depth of this, the power of this. Surrender, Neha, is the absolute epitome of your spiritual sadhana. It is not easy. Your ego construct, the layers of your conditioning, the desires that you have, the ambitions that you have. Huh? Our scripture says these are called petty ambitions. The petty ambitions of the world that we have, all of this put together, they will not allow you to surrender. Most of the time when people think they are surrendering, they are basically either being lazy or dejected. This laziness or dejection, people on the spiritual path think it is surrender. But surrender is a very, um, is the epitome of the sadhana. Yeah. So in the initial parts of your journey, no matter how hard you try, surrender will just not happen. Your mind will pray play tricks with you. As I said, it will be part of the laziness or dejection. I'm not able to do something, so surrender. Or I'm too lazy to do something, let's surrender. This is how the mind will play tricks. Be aware. This is how he does it. Now, what is the way forward? As per the ritual traditions and the system that our rishis have formed, they have created a very beautiful structure. I'm going to share that structure with you now. In the stage one, know that for a truth that most of the humanity, most of the humanity on earth is a combination of Rajasic energy, which is the action orientation of the energy, and Tamasic energy, which is the delusional aspect of the energy. There are three aspects of the energy. Tamasic, which is the delusional, the slow, the laziness, and all of that. Rajasic, absolute action orientation. And Satvik, which is slow down. Receiving things as they are. As you're saying, surrendering. That's the third aspect of the energy. So in the beginning of the journey, it is very essential that we be a little proactive. We all have this Rajasic energy. If Rajasic energy is prominent in you, which is the action orientation, then you must use this energy. Understand this very carefully. Then you must use this energy and channelize this energy as part of the larger Karma Yoga. What does that mean? Which means you will continue to do your karma, as the words that you use, I think, manifesting. Go into the world of manifestation but with the absolute spiritual goal or spiritual understanding in it. Follow the dharmic ways, the right ways of achieving whatever you want to achieve. Yeah, so that's number one. Number two, the deep understanding of Karam Yoga, because you have this Rajasic energy, you channelize this energy in the way that two conditions are met. Condition number one, the Karata Bhav, the doership should, should not be there. The feeling of doership should not be there. I am not doing it. It is happening through me. All the work of manifestation that you're doing in the world of matter, in the world of spirit, you should not have this karta bhav. 
I am not the doer. It is happening through me. Number one principle. Number two condition is you must not be attached to the end goal or the end result. Even if the end result is spiritual in nature, let's not be attached to that. This is the work that is happening through me. I am doing that. What comes at the end of it? Do I enjoy today deep meditation? Or will my mind be active? I don't know. I don't care. I am doing my, my duty, my karma. Or rather, I am allowing the actions to flow through me. Principle number three. Then all the action that I am doing, I am dedicating those actions to the divine. Either the actions are of the world or of the spiritual nature, of your inner practice. You are dedicating, dedicating those actions to the divine. That's where the deity comes in. If you are a lover of Shiva, whatever action throughout the day you, your body and mind is performing, offer it to the feet of Shiva. And then whatever Shiva decides to bless you with, that's your prasada. That's your gain. That's your fruit. If you, whenever you go to temple, Neha, any temple of any tradition you go, there are different kinds of prasads that they give you. Yeah? Different kinds of prasads. Somewhere there's a laddu, mishri, some fruit, some other things, etc. When you go to the temple, you don't ask, I want laddu. You don't ask that. Whatever the priest gives you, you receive that as prasad for the day. Right? So which means you don't have the right over which prasad you should get of the action that you perform. You don't have the right on that. So whatever prasad you receive, sometimes it could be bitter neem leaves, mind you. Yeah. Or, or sometimes it could be tulsi leaves. Yeah. It does not matter. It's a prasad. That is the attitude which one must have on the spiritual journey. Remember, this is what I call as a stage one where you have the Rajasic energy and you're channelizing your Rajasic energy. In the stage one, actually two stages gets covered automatically. If you have, if the predominant energy is Rajasic action orientation, then this formula works very well. But if the predominant energy is Tamas, the delusion, the laziness, then also this formula works because the Tamas needs to be converted into Rajas, which means if the tamas is dominant, your first step should be to make rajas the dominant energy. Move towards rajas a little bit. Yeah. And then, Neha, we will enter into the next step. And that is the surrender bhav. That's the sattva bhav. As you start to practice channelizing this rajasic energy, let me repeat, where the bhav of doership is not there, where the attachment to the result is not there. Where whatever result comes, the mind says positive, the mind says negative, does not matter. I receive it as the prasad given to me by my guru, by my deity. Prasad is karva, painful, I receive it as a prasad. Prasad is sweet, I receive it as a prasad. And remember, prasad is powerful, it has divine power. So even the bitter, negative, divine power prasad you get, it will benefit you in the journey. Shiva gives you that for certain growth that must come through that bitter prasad. Yeah, so three things. And once you start to practice that, Neha, then slowly you will see the sattvic energies in you will start to manifest, will start to take prominence. And that's when the magic starts to begin. That's when they, huh, everything starts to become surrender. You will be doing lots of action because the essence of action orientation or rajas will still be there. It will not go away. But even working for 18 hours of the day, you will not feel tired. You will feel as if you didn't do anything. I don't know which energy comes of Shiva and gets all of this done through. Me. And always the bhav will be of deep surrender. But this surrender is not devoid of action. In your question, there was a there was a tint which said that surrender is devoid of action. You leave everything to the divine. 
right? Surrender is not devoid of the action. You leave everything to the divine, absolute surrender to your deity, to your master, to your gurus. But you keep performing the action as the opportunity presents itself to you. These words are important now. You keep performing the action, the karma, as the opportunity presents itself to you. Meaning, you do whatever is required to be done in a particular situation, period. There will be no self-will that I must do this. I must not do that. This self-will will start to disappear. When the surrender, when the sattva starts to get activated, there'll be no self-will. And whatever event or situation presents itself to you, and whatever is the right action needs to be performed in that situation, you just perform that, move on. That's when we start to become lotus neha, in the mud, in the water. Neither the mud nor the water will touch you. Yet the flower will be blossom. Yet the flower will send out its fragrance. Yet again, the flower will still be manifesting its beauty, but not be touched by the water or the mud around. That's what surrender is all about. It's my wish and pray and my blessing to you, Nea, that you attain and we all attain that level of surrender. But please understand and be mindful of following this step as it should. You get over this, Nea, it will really help you. These are some deep sutras I've shared in a very simple way. But this is really the essence. You follow sadhana like this, it will be difficult, it will not be easy. Mind we play thousands of tricks, bring a lot of doubts and confusions. That's the job of the mind. Let it do its job. Let it bring the doubts and the confusion. You be firm on these sutras that I shared with you and see the magic unfolding. Hope it helps, Neha. Thank you. Yes, Bhaktiji. I think there's noise coming in. Is it from your side, somebody? It could be uh, because the others. Uh, I'm I'm at a place, Anishji. I'm sorry. Uh, there is some noise in the background. I'll just quickly read out the question and then I'll go on mute. Ha, that will be good. Yes. Yes. G. So our uh, second question is by Ash J. Um, and the question is, how can we cultivate a deep connection with our inner self and gradually lessen the need for external company and social interactions? Mm, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> the, the famous line I would say on this is that there's a friend request in your box waiting to be accepted and that's from you. You accept friend requests for all the people in the world, Ash. You don't accept your own friend request. That's the problem. What is your attitude towards the self? If I ask you who's your best friend, will you name people outside or will you name yourself is the question. If you name yourself that I'm my best friend, only then some hope is possible. Otherwise, we will always be outward driven, external driven, we will continue be continue to try and gain. We'll continue to be slave, basically, Ash. Why slaves? Because we will continue to gain people's appreciations, approvals, and validations. Appreciation, approval, validation. Because when you're outer driven, that's all we do. We try to influence and impress people so that we get approval, appreciation, validation. That's all we do. It's a slavery. So where do you start from? My, my question to you is, please watch out what is your attitude towards your own self. That will define everything in your life, Ash, everything. Are you taking yourself for granted? If yes, there's a problem. Are you taking your health for granted, your body for granted? If yes, there's a problem. Are you taking your thoughts for granted? If yes, there's a problem. Because then. It means you don't respect yourself. You don't love yourself. You're not your friend. And if these are the three conditions, you don't love yourself, you don't respect yourself, you're not friendly with your own self, then you don't want to spend time with your own self. You follow me. 
anybody you don't love anybody you don't respect anybody you don't feel friendly with you don't want to spend time with them right so now you don't spend time with you with your own self that's where the problem will start to begin and you will start to look outward yeah now the other side of the story please listen to this carefully when you fall in love with somebody what do you do when you fall in love with somebody what you do you want to express you want to write love letters to them messages to them right when was the last time you wrote a letter to your own self let me ask you ever in the modern language we would talk about writing a diary or a journal do you talk to yourself ash if not please start to talk to yourself how do you talk to yourself not in the head that's chatter that's not self talk that's garbage what is self talk self talk really means i sit down in a quiet place i open my diary i write notes to myself hey ash do you know there is this beautiful aspect about you do you know that your heart always feels great when you help somebody out ash you write these things notes to your own self ash when you start to eat food you are usually watching tv i, I don't think you are really aware of the food that you are eating ash you write notes to yourself these are love letters you are writing to the beloved sitting inside you ash do that as a step number 2 when you are in love with somebody what do you want to do most you want to spend time with them do you ever spend time with you and what does spending time means with the beloved what do you do you just want to hold the hand of the beloved and watch the stars and the moons and the sky and the trees and the river and everything you just want to hold the hand similarly do you spend time with yourself you your cup of chai just by yourself sitting and enjoying the beauties of nature all around we call it spending quality time in relationship do you do that if not please start to do that i'm giving you tools and tips how do you develop this self relationship yeah so start to spend this time with you once you do that ash you will be very astonished there are deeper beliefs and notions that you have when you spend time with your own self when you start to write notes to your own self your own deeper beliefs which are actually shaping your life today most of these beliefs and notion you don't even know they don't come on the surface they make you act but do you don't know why you are acting in a certain way in a certain situation because these are deep rooted beliefs notions that are working and that that are pushing your action unfortunately we don't know these these beliefs as we start to spend time with ourselves we start to observe our patterns we start to see our beliefs we start to see what is my strength what are the gifts of the divine that has been nature has bestowed me with what are my real gifts you start to polish those gifts you start to harness those gifts yeah and then the dormant potentialities lying under your being they will start to get awakened these are layers that we are removing as we do it in an onion the dormant potentials that we have they start to manifest themselves they start to come on the surface bingo that's now the life starts to manifest itself through you again watch the words here this is really when life starts to manifest through you the way it is supposed to be not the mental disease or the physical ailments no life wants to manifest through you in a very beautiful in a positive way in a very way of abundance in a way of nurturing and that will then start to happen and lastly i <coughs> create the surrounding around you in your life cell create such a life cell that all of these steps that i shared with you are possible spending time with you is possible 
writing letters with you is possible, listening to your favorite music while not looking at the phone. All of these things become possible. Create a conducive environment around you. See, environment is very important, Ash. So create the conducive environment. In that conducive environment, there is no scope for, you know, constant messaging on the phone or, or social media on the phone. That's not conducive environment then. Keep all of these distractions aside. Only then you will really be able to know yourself. Become friend with your own self. Give your own self quality solitude and quality silence. I use two words. Solitude and silence, but I added an adjective here, quality. Silence and quality solitude, where the, the onslaught of technology and the media is not there. Where the disturbances and distractions are not there. Once you do this, you will see. You will become your best friend, not in an egoistic way, not in an obsessive self-love way, deep respect, deep reverence for your own self, not obsessive. Why this deep self-respect and reverence? Because you will start to realize there is divinity sitting inside you. And that divinity is what really is making you alive. It's not your mind that is making you alive. It's the divinity in you that is making you alive. It's not the breath that is making you alive. It's the divinity in you that is making this breath go in and out. You will start to touch that layer. Yeah. So, and once you become your best connect, your dependence on the world outside, your greediness of the people's attention, your need for people's approval and validation will all start to go away. That does not mean you'll become a solo player in life. Now you will be so filled with this exuberant energy in you that whosoever you meet and talk, you will just knowingly or unknowingly spread this exuberant joyful energy all around because that is what is in you. Remember, whatever is in you will manifest or will be spread around. If it's stress and negativity, that will you, you will, you will spread and share that all around. If it's hatred and anger, that is what you will share all around. If it is friendship, care, compassion, reverence, that is what you will share around. Because you can't share anything with the world if you don't have it. So you need to cultivate these things with, within you. I'm glad you asked this question. It shows that you want to move towards this side of life, which is a great blessing. So meditate over this, listen to this again, and I'm sure it's going to help you. Thank you. Yes, Swati Ji. The third question is by Gaurav Ji from Gurgaon. He's asking with, with the recent reports of uh, corporate employees facing fatal consequences due to stress, it raises an important question. Is it truly just stress or is it the deeper discontent that leads to stress? After all, many entrepreneurs work for 80 to 90 hours a week or more, yet rarely seem to complain. What is the difference? How can one manage themselves in a way that enables them to handle external pressures, whether from workplace, relationship, or society, without it leading to such extreme outcomes? Mm. From Gaurav Ji. <clears throat> Wonderful. Wonderful. There's been a lot of uh, reports and news uh, talking about corporate stress and work pressure these days, uh, which is causing a lot of physical as well as mental well-being issues in the institutions. Let's understand a few important pointers today, Gaurav. I'm glad you asked this question. Number one, stress and pressure is part of life. Let's first accept that. Let's not create any rosy picture in the mind that, you know, 
um, uh, life is just a, like a surfing on the water kind of a thing. Before you learn to surf on the water, you fall many a times. You have to build the muscles. Your core muscles have to be very strong if you really want to surf the water. Your balance has to be very strong if you really want to surf the water. And once you're able to do that, then the life becomes a smooth sailing. But life in itself, if you look at life as a as an overall thing, stress and pressure is part of life. If that's not there, you'll not build your muscles. Yeah. So that's the first uh, note that I want to share with you, that it's part of life. Now. Where is the problem? Problem number one. There is a word called Karamshetra in Hindi, which is the field of work. There is another word called Yuddhashetra, which is field of war, the battleground. We've confused these two. And we've created havoc. What we've really done, we've created, we've replaced our Karamshetra and we've started treating it as Yuddhashetra. We've treated, we've started treating our field of work as a battleground. I meet a lot of corporate CEOs and uh, do some work with them, do some retreats and uh, sessions with them. I'm surprised that many a times boardrooms are called war rooms. I'm sorry, it's a wrong understanding. Boardrooms are not war rooms. Business is not a Yuddha Kshetra, it's not a battleground. It's a Karma Kshetra field of work where you just create something you just create some products or something. it's a field of work who has put this thought i think it's a western thought which has come and which has created havoc in the lives of uh, institutions by creating it as a battleground no we are not at war in business in our offices in our institutions please understand we are not at war we are doing we are part of this business. That's all we are doing. It's a field of karma, it's a field of work. That's the first understanding we need to correct. It's not a battleground, right? Now, the other element here, Gaurav, is anything that you love a lot, you're passionate about, any work, any, any activity that you love and you're passionate about, now, no matter how much time and effort and energy you put in that work, it will not cause you any stress. Because that, that is your love affair. You are passionate about this. It will not cause you stress. Yeah. Which means, probably we are doing things which we are not loving. Misplaced. Everything has become probably misplaced. We are doing a finance job while my heart says I must play guitar, I must be a musician. But for some reason, some pressure, some unknown conditions, I've been forced to do finance. Now, finance will cause me a lot of stress because my internal wiring is not prepared for that. I don't love it. Anything that you don't love, even if I ask you to do for an hour, it is a hell for you. You know, we we get people who whose bodies are not flexible. We ask them, make bodies flexible, otherwise there'll be a lot of health issues. We ask them to do some yoga. We we train them on doing some yoga bhyasa. And I tell you that half even half an hour of Physical activity is like hell for them. They just want to sit, don't want to do it because they don't love sweating it out. On the other hand, we have people, if they don't practice two hours of yoga bhyasa every day, they feel something is missing in their life. What's the difference? These people who do two hours of active physical asan based yoga bhyasa and sweat it out, they love that. They're passionate about it. They don't feel any stress. For them, it's the joy of life. For the other, even 30 minutes of very light body movements, body asanas is held to them. So that's the point number two. Please choose your field of work, your career options, your profession very carefully. 
it's just not whatever my friends are choosing whatever my family is suggesting everybody is saying i must go to this engineering college so i go there please don't do that understand who you are understand what is it that you feel passionate about every morning when you get up build your career accordingly please don't have this uh, misplaced career options don't do that that will create havoc even if the workload is not there i know so many people there is no workload that they have but they keep cribbing about the work that they are doing why because they just don't love it so that's where the problem number 2 arises do you love what you are doing if not there is a problem number 3 you see what does stress really mean let's look at that stress basically means inability to handle something that's what stress is all about you go to a gym day one you start to wait uh, you start to do heavy weights your muscles are not ready for that there will be lot of stress to the muscles and they will pain and ache they'll become stiff and they'll become so stiff and the pain will be will be so much that next couple of days you'll not be able to go to the gym back again why you did not prepare your body mind properly so stress is like that if you give small doses of stress to your muscles every day in the gym small doses the muscle start to build itself and you see your mind is also a muscle your attitude is also a muscle your habit is also a muscle with small doses of stress you build these muscles so that you are able to then handle large doses of stress so there is a problem we not preparing ourselves we not preparing ourselves well enough to give you an example of this i meet a lot of people in the corporate world they do a lot of mean, mental cerebral work their minds are engaged a lot yes very good that's the requirement of their job they think mind is a solo component no connection with the body they are overweight they are obese they are this they are that what are you doing you thought the mind is a solo instrument which will just do your work that your organization wants you to do you're not supporting it with the supportive body there is a problem there is an absolute problem because in the spiritual traditions god we always use this term mind body we never say mind alone body alone it's mind body or body mind go to the institution see what people are eating when their body does not want they give them a cup of coffee when their body does not want they give it a samosa when their body does not want somebody's birthday is there and the sandwiches are coming they just keep sitting it's not because of lots of work they can move they can do some desk yoga they need to move their body they don't go out in the sun they are so habitual in sitting in the air condition they are not receiving the energy from the solar system they are disconnected from all of this they are not even touching the ground their body's electromagnetic circuit is broken do you see the problem you because of the lifestyle that you have created for yourself your body's connection with the larger cosmic body called nature is broken once that is broken your body's connection with its own unit called mind is getting broken these are broken systems within an individual that we are creating and these broken systems cannot handle even an iota of stress the problem your job your career your profession does not mean you don't look at the instrument which is making it work so i see lot of people are ignoring the instrument we now conduct programs in the corporate integrated well being programs we just going there teaching them if you don't work with this instrument if you don't set your dincharya properly if you don't connect with nature if you don't work with your food there is a deep problem then no matter how light is your work in your organization it will still cause you stress because your system is disrupting 
you're creating it a broken system just a small example i meet a lot of people and i see how much water do you drink every day and they say classic <clears throat> classic statement i get from them oh we forget to drink water we so engrossed in the work we forget to drink water now your boss will not come and knock on your cabin or your head saying that hello it's time to drink a glass of water please do that he's not going to come or she's not going to come and do that for you that's basic which means your awareness is not inside the body it has just gone somewhere else and then you will complain about stress sorry there's a problem you're not taking the system you're not maintaining the system well we need to do that and gorav i'm also very mindful of the current world realities reality of the current job business career profession world i i know the reality there because of that you have to be extra cautious now because the system is becoming very transaction oriented not transformation oriented institutions are becoming a uh, very um, a lot of institutions not all uh, becoming like a machine they are losing the soul at one level we individual are losing our soul at another level the large an institution the collective institution are losing their soul we are becoming a machine the institution is becoming a machine when we become a machine when inst institution is becoming just like a robotic machine we need to be extra cautious at this time 20 30 50 years ago there was a time when uh, institutions had a lot of soul in them they had an ecosystem to to take care of people in a very uh, human way now they do take care of the people most of the time in a mechanical way there was a time 50 years ago when we used to take care of our, our own self in a very human way now we also take care of ourselves in a very mechanical way working dinners working lunch lunch on the go sandwich in the car coffee on the go have you seen any other animal do that on the go lunches always running around no they don't do that when they eat they eat they enjoy their meal when was the last time you enjoyed your meal beyond two bites of the first taste which just stimulated your taste buds and that's the end of it then everything became robotic mechanical the awareness was even either in the discussion in the meeting or on the tv or on the mobile or in the thoughts when we conduct these programs or we make it a point when these teams of 30 people in the organization 20 people in the organization when they sit to eat during the program they must not talk to each other they must eat in quiet and you know what they tell us after that is that this is the first time they've enjoyed this meal so much and it's the same meal that they eat every day it's out of their own uh, mess their own canteen of the organization it's the same today it tasted a lot better to them they also say that today after eating they're not feeling uh, heaviness in the body why they chew the food properly they also say that today i we feel that we've eaten less than our usual meal because you were eating mindfully you can't eat more you can't eat more than your hunger but if you don't eat mindfully while talking discussion you tend to eat a lot do you think all of these things are not causing stress to you then you're mistaken each one of these thing is building on to your stress and then i can't even talk about the rest the sleep most of my corporate uh, friends most of them have they have the habit of going to bed with their phone or the machine laptop they are on the screen if your body is not getting enough regenerating sleep do you think it's not adding to the stress it is big time adding to the stress 
please maintain the discipline this is on us now on the organization side yes i agree organization needs to be more human they need to build an ecosystem around they need to create a culture where everything is human they don't ask their people to overstress or work on the weekends or work late nights no it's a wrong practice it's absolutely a wrong practice if your superiors your bosses are inhuman to you in terms of allocating access work to you there is a problem you must oppose that and please don't understand organizations are separate and you as an individual are separate you as a collective of individuals are creating these institutions nobody else talk to the institution set the systems right set the cultures right talk to your superiors talk to your colleagues talk to your subordinates but before that happens karo the onus does not lie on the institution the onus lies on you because it's your life it's not the institution's life it's your life we are talking about so the onus must start from you if you don't set your discipline right you don't have the right to blame anybody else if five of your colleagues are sitting and having a discussion in the or having a meeting and it's 6:30 in the evening or 7 pm in the evening you don't need to drink another cup of coffee at that time your body does not need that it's a habitual behavior that we are doing because everybody is doing we are also doing that please listen to your own body mind carefully these are some of the ways i'm suggesting goro which will help you as an individual to develop your stress muscle to develop your resilience against the stress let me put it that way to develop the muscle of resilience against any any stress and please remember stress is just not in the mind whatever you're doing to the body you're not giving it enough sleep enough rest you are overfeeding it you're not breathing properly you're disconnecting from nature that stress is building in the body and body mind is one unit please understand that it's just that when the stress happens in the mind that is when you realize it but it's already happening in the muscles on your neck on your lower back it's all adding on and that's the reason we're falling sick that's that's the classic reason we're all falling sick the society is becoming sick ill it's an ill society that that we are creating so we need to fix that very quickly and lastly before i end this this is an important topic i'm taking little extra time here lastly life gorav is all about balance learn from your own body your perfect balance temperature is 98.4 your body is telling you that if you become excessive 4 or 5 degrees here extra plus or 4 or 5 degrees minus extra there is a deep problem that we have body is constantly telling you i am tuned to live in balance your mind is telling you i am tuned to live in balance please don't become obsessive and we become obsessive in a way it's 10 o'clock i'm on my bed the day is over my habit tells me no no please look at the social media my habit nudge me oh no there must be an important mail the world is not going to change in those 2 hours if you don't look at your phone or or your news on the tv the world will remain the way it is but if you watch media for those 2 hours your body is totally then out of sync yeah that's the balance we are talking about the balance of some of these pointers maintain this healthy balance anything that you do in obsessive i must to do that there is a problem obsession means you are moving away from the center of balance and moving to an ati and extreme zone shri krishna said in gita very beautifully all extremes are a problem extreme rest is a problem extreme deprivation of sleep is a problem 
extreme hunger is a problem if you don't if you just don't eat for many days there is a problem extreme fasting is a problem but extreme indulgence in food is also a problem extreme restfulness is a problem extreme activity with the body is also a problem because a yogi or life sustains in a balance everything around you see life is a certain balance let's not blame it on the institutions while we have the responsibility on our own to first set our own institution right and then influence the external influ uh, institution that's the way it will work yeah think on some of these points and uh, the last point i would say on this is we have forgotten gorav how to laugh we've made as i said earlier where i started this pointers from we've made life into a yuddha kshetra not just the field of work in the business we've created our own life as a yuddha kshetra as if we are in a battlefield all the time in the battlefield people don't laugh you know <laughs> life is not a battlefield and job is part of just a small segment of your life you're not born just to create a career just that's one beautiful part of your life even when you're performing that part laugh when you're not performing that part you're with your family laugh you're sitting alone smile yeah don't take life too seriously yeah and that's the end statement i would end here with learn to laugh everything in life comes and goes learn to laugh in this center bindu called the balance of life and the stresses will not disturb you anymore hope it helps thank you Rati ji, I took little extra on this because thank you, thank you, and you see, you you have uh, been shared the content that is, I mean, that takes us to understand days in in such a short time. So thank you so much for this, and also on on ten there is World Mental Health Day, and the focus oh. is on on the workplace uh, mental well being and also the balance of life. So you you shared about that as well. Mm -hmm. So great Plan sutras time. for everyone. Yeah. Um, so now, looking at the time, Swati, I would say yeah. if there's any uh, quick question that we have from our friends who joined today. Yes, I yes, we do have. We have. We have one question. Quickly take a look at that. Yes. Just take. Just take one. One of them. Sure. Sure. This question is from Varsha ji. Um, she's asking, can self love or ex uh, acceptance be an obstacle in self development or improvement where to draw the line this okay. is uh, to the previous question that you wonderful very yes. good varsha ji you asked a very pertinent question yes now the line is and there is a line you must know the self love and self obsession there is a clear cut marked mark, marked line between that many a times if you miss this line your selfless love becomes self obsession yeah let's look at it carefully when let's say you have uh, certain things that you think you must improve upon in yourself let's say you have this habit of uh, not getting up early in, in the morning just i'm taking a small example if you start to really hate yourself because you're not able to get up at you know 5 am for your sadhana or your yoga practice or whatever that is if you start to hate yourself for that if you start to crib about about your behavior saying that i try too hard but i'm not able to get up in the morning i'm such a lazy person now please look at it the moment you say i'm such a lazy person your mind is listening your cells are listening and then you say every day i'm such a lazy person i'm not able to get up you know what you're doing you're creating a system called self hypnosis now you hypnotize yourself saying that i'm a lazy person your body says okay if that is so i accept you as you are i'm a lazy person now your mind will not want to get up in the morning do you do you follow what i'm saying self acceptance here means i accept 
I'm not able to get up in the morning at 5 a.m. I want to. Then I talk to myself that, see, I must, it's like you, the way you make a child understand, there's an inner child sitting inside you. You make that child understand, hey, look, when you get up at 7 o'clock, your entire schedule gets disrupted. You want to work on your body, you're not able to do that. Okay, let's not do 5 o'clock. Let's start from 6 o'clock. Let's come on the center. Not 5, let's do 6 o'clock. This is Varshaji, this is self-love. You've accepted the points that you have which are not so positive. You've accepted that, yes, I want to work on those points, but you're not hating yourself for that. You are lovingly addressing that issue. You are compassionately accepting and now addressing that issue. Do you follow what I'm saying? Acceptance of your lacunas, your negative attributes, does not mean, ah, I'm, I can't get up in the morning, I'm lazy. I have accepted that, period. That's not acceptance. That's giving up. Please understand the difference between acceptance and giving up. That's giving up. Acceptance means I accept this lacuna. It must be corrected because otherwise it impacts every part of my health, my body, my sadhana. Let me do that. And with this self-love, you see the magic of your inner child listening to you, your inner self listening to you, your mind and your entire self trillions of cells listening to you and cooperating with you. The point is just not listening to you. They will start to, all of these elements will start to cooperate with you. And then you also invoke the divine, oh shit, please come help me. I want to get up at 5 o'clock. Do something that my sleep just gets broken at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Now you're also not just invoking what is inside, also what is there which is also here, by the way, huh? but you don't know that right now. So for you, it's there and here, duality. So you invoke the outer, you invoke the inner. See the magic unfolding. See the magic unfolding. That's what is self-love all about. And that's what is acceptance all about. I hope it makes it clear. Please, um, see, this is a very important subject again, because, um, I've seen people make self-love into self-obsession. And I, I've seen people in the name of acceptance, they just give up. Uh, don't do these mistakes. Yeah. So meditate over it and the magic of this, I'm sure will unfold. I'm sure about it. Yeah. With that, uh, I think we've come to the end of today's lovely gathering. Um, before we end, let's just uh, have version of everybody here. Yeah, so beautiful, so beautiful, so many amazing, beautiful, enlightened faces all around. I'm able to see some of my very old friends uh, whom I've not met in even 20 years, I think, Anjali. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's such a blessing to be with all of you. And uh, Naveen ji, so good to see you. Uh, just some of the friends I'm, I'm seeing after a very long time. Uh, before we end, just let's, with folded hands, let's just close our eyes for a minute. With folded hands, let's just close our eyes. Please watch your breath. Breath going in, breath coming out. Another deep breath going in and coming out. One more deep breath going in and coming out. Inwardly with closed eyes. Just pray to the Devi today, Adi Shakti, Ma Kushmanda today, the cosmic womb 
this cosmic womb and the ansha, the part of this cosmic womb, is in all of us. We all have the potential and possibility to create a more aware, more beautiful, more loving, and more joyful self. And we also have the potential and possibility to give birth to a more joyful, more beautiful, more loving, and more awakened world around. May Devi Adi Shakti today bless us so that we're able to awaken our own possibilities. Om Adi Shakti Namaha. Om Adi Shakti Namaha. Om Adi Shakti Namaha. With that, we can. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining in. Wherever you are, be joyful, be in love, be in ananda, be in seva of beings around you. The world is very important. Have this self love, have this self trust. You're very important. The world needs you. Make your life more meaningful, more sattvic, more in the path of sadhana. Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. We shall meet soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anishji, for this magic that you do every time for such powerful, enlightening, and awakening satsang. So, so the magic has happened today with the blessings of the Devi. And I want to share this with everyone that uh, receiving these words directly from the Guru uh, must not be taken for granted. These are This is something that we must express our gratitude towards and um, also share it and not keep it at our level. So whatever feeling that we are getting right now, whatever, like I said, the magic has happened with me. Some might be feeling that some you're feeling some peace, some realization, some inner transformation, whatever has happened, share it with us and also share it with many other people. And uh, if you are uh, a part of this Sangha, this gathering, then make other people also join this. Uh, Anishji always talks about Vasudev Kutumbakam. So let's nurture this larger family and let's keep, you know, adding more and more people to our family. That's how the joy grows. That's how the bliss grows multifold. And uh, uh, so we'll, we keep sharing a lot of things on our group. You can spread it and share it within your family groups, in your circle, on social media, whichever medium you are comfortable with. Feel free from our end. We just send it to you and then it's your content because you are also equally a part of this family. So, so you can share it the way you feel like. Then comes one very small announcement, but a very profound one. Um, last month, a month back, we started live satsang on Srimad Bhagavatam with Sri Anish. And they go live on YouTube, on our YouTube channel uh, every Wednesday and uh, every Friday at 5.30 p.m. If you are receiving those messages of live session and you have not yet started joining them, then do join them. Because in life, we often think that um, we must read some ancient scripture and try to decode the hidden messages on our own or whatever perspective and understanding we have in life. But uh, most of the time, our own understanding, our own perspective, they become limiting. And when the guru you know, shares it, then he himself becomes the medium and enabler of these messages from the scriptures. And then it's not about decoding. Then it becomes the divinity or the Paramatma flowing through him directly to us. Um, I'm saying this because this is something that we at, at the ashram feel every day. Uh, ever since this has started, the satsang have started, we are experiencing deep inner transformations. And uh, I'm doing my part by telling you this, by sharing this transformation that I am feeling on behalf of the Sadhu Ashram. So, so do join these sessions. If you are not a part of the group, if you're not receiving the messages, then messages on the chat, we'll keep the chat open. 
and uh, we'll add you to the group. We'll add you and we'll keep sending you all these messages. We'll also share the playlist with you. Um, so far, eight uh, live um, satsangs have already happened. So whenever you get time, you can just uh, uh, you know uh, sit in silence and uh, receive the blessings from those satsangs also. With this, uh, we have overshot our time by five minutes. But these announcements were very important, so I didn't want to leave without sharing them with you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot uh, for uh, to all of you. And we'll meet again on the third Sunday of this month. Thank you. And for the, uh, you know, receiving the Devi's blessing and again chanting that I am Thank you. Om Tat Sat.